Uh, Brent, it was a few years ago that I was here at BCW. In fact, the building behind me was just being erected at the time. Yep. Uh, the business has come some way in that few years, hasn't it? Can you tell us a little bit about the journey? Well, we've certainly done a heck of a lot over the last couple of years. Um, what you'll see as you go around our facility, we've invested immensely within our machine tool divisions, be it automotive, precision components, but we've also added to just our machining capability. We can also surface treat as well, um, where we are anodizing, sulfuric anodizing components for the automotive market, of which we're expanding as well into the automotive sector as well, at the aerospace sector in tartaric anodizing. So we've done a heck of a lot of work. We've been at the forefront as tier one into our client base. We're actually on 100,000 square feet of uh, facilities at the moment. That's expanding over the next year to, for a further 80,000 square feet. And that's based on business that we've actually won. So we've got facilities being erected right now for machining equipments, automation to go in against the customers that we've gone and won, that we're going to be delivering into next year, which is really, really exciting for everybody as part of this business. Now, I know UK manufacturing is, is doing ex extremely well at the moment, yep. e even though we hear lots of stories about Brexit around the corner, which I'm sure we'll come on to shortly. Yep. But some engineers might look at this and think, how on earth have you achieved what you've achieved? Because, you know, growing a business isn't easy, is it? Well, you're right. Uh, what we've got is we've got a board of directors that are... What you could say is very, very entrepreneurial in spirit. They have always had a vision in mind. The site that we stand on today, there is pictures on flip charts 10 years ago, 15 years ago when we first started that had this site on it. And actually the drawings that were there are being realized. And it's their vision and their drive into their executive leadership team to go work, be at that forefront of that client base to deliver to our clients a, a QCD, uh, position that's allowed us to carry on doing what we're doing. Now, you can't do that if you keep looking behind you and wondering what's going on in the marketplace and who your competitors are. You become your own uh, best ally and you go out there and you sell your business and that's what we've done. And quite simply, we've got a simple strategy. The strategy is a 555. Within five years, revenues of 50 million. And obviously we want a profitable growing business. So we want 10%, we want 5 million. That's our, our aim. Now, at the moment, we're about 25 million. A couple of years ago, when you came on this site, we are probably about 14 million. So the exponential growth that we've been going through is just truly amazing. So the, the markets that you're servicing and the customers that you have, uh, is there one particular area which you're, you're very strong in? And if that is the case, is that not a little risky with this strategy in mind? You could say there's risk there's always risk in all business it's fair to say that the markets that we play in certain markets have accelerated more than others and that's just because of the way that the markets have developed but for us as a company we have to diversify our portfolio we do want to de-risk our position in the market sectors which means we have to have a massive drive on parts of our business that might be smaller than others just to counterbalance because we're a big player in certain sectors, which means we've got to try a lot harder, be a lot more entrepreneurial in other sectors. Because what we're not going to do is take our foot off the gas in the sectors we're doing well in. We just need to put the foot more to the gas in the sectors that we're not doing so well in. And that's why we're going to keep on growing. The capabilities that you have here at BCW Manufacturing are second to none, from very small parts to very large parts, but where did it all start, Tony? Oh, well, we started 15 years ago in a small unit in the other side of Burnley, at Small Shore Industrial Estate, into what you see today. But how did you achieve this growth in such a short period of time? Oh, well, we've evolved and worked with a local council uh, to promote jobs in the area, and obviously with the owners and the council, uh, to see what, you, what we've got today, really. So in regards to the components and the processes, can you give me an example of how they have evolved and what kind of components, you know, you make very complex components, but you know, how, how do you manufacture them? Well, we started from simple turn components and mill components to complicated five-axis, multi-axis machining and associated processes, because we also deliver now machine parts in a treated condition so we take a part from cradle to grave. Well when you say cradle to grave we at MTD have been um, talking about turnkey solutions in, 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 a, in great detail now you are actually manufacturing your own jigs and fixtures and, and designing them yeah. here in-house? Well as we've grown we've, we, we've actually had to grow quickly and it has enabled us to do that we've had to design processes 
and manufacture parts ourselves with jigs, fixtures, work holding, solutions, and now into automation. Is, is this a part of your growth? Is this a part of your success? And, and how important is getting that process right? Well, it's a part of our evolution. What we've seen is anyone can turn and mill a part, but to actually create a robust process to deliver perfect part takes a little bit more than that. And that's really where we are today. Now, there's a lot of companies that are buying turnkey solutions in, um, and, and this is due to lack of skill. So how do you keep and maintain skill levels? Well, we've brought, we've brought in uh, some extra skills into BCW to enable us to grow. So robotics and computer programming, analysts, uh, all that's part of our growth. And, and as your evolution has been progressing, and it's still progressing, you're having another, yet another site being built, what, what work are you still getting, getting into? Well, we, mainly our gross automotive. But as you say, we're in the aerospace building at the moment, where we do uh, air, uh, airframe parts, turn, small turn parts up to large machinings. And if you had to round it up in your words, Tony, what are the secrets to your success? I think our secrets are we have a passion. We have a passion to supply jobs to this, this area and there's a passion for engineering in the business right through from the owners, right through to the guy who sweeps the floor. Some time ago, I knew the business as an automotive tier one supplier, as you yep. said. Now there are very, you're involved in very many uh, industries. The aerospace has some tre tremendous components in there, which I know, unfortunately, yep. some of which we can't show can't on camera. Show. Yep. Um, but, but those are markets that you're into as well, aren't they, in a big way for our audience to know. The aerospace, the nuclear, yep. all of those. Can you, can you mention a few? Well, we've even ventured into space. So there's a multiple faceted business that you've got here. We were a make to print business and machine to print business. We aren't that anymore. We, we literally can take a piece of metal and we can supply chain manage that through the whole supply chain as tier one, through machining, through surface coatings, through assembly, moving into man metal manipulation and sub assembly work as well. We understand that from our client base that if we can do more and more of the value add that re reduces their need for more um, build at their side, it's only going to be better for them. They're going to keep the crown jewels with themselves, which is more design and, and make, and they need a supply chain that can integrate, can be a hub for them, play a tier one, reduce their foot uh, soldiers in terms of procurement, and pass that down the food chain. That is our strategy. Our strategy is actually is, is symmetry with what our customers are after. Uh, and employees-wise here, how, how, for the local area, you're a great business, aren't you? You know, yep. you, you're, you're putting a lot of food on the table for a lot of people. Well, we're proud of that. Um, again, that goes back to the owners of this company. They, they have driven this company, of which we have the same ethos, that we want a company that we're all happy to be uh, at work in. Not a stressful environment. We want to work hard, but at the same time, we want to enjoy what we're doing. If you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to succeed. And we don't have to think about lots and lots of profits what we want to do is we want to develop a company we want to grow that company it needs to be profitable clearly we, we need to sustain that growth but it's not all about how much percent that you've made it's about how you've delivered that to the region how many people are involved in that within the region and like i say back to the owners they're not from this region they came to this region and in, in essence they're now giving back and they are they've done so in swathes and you said to me earlier in this interview about the, the 555 mm. plan. Uh, that's, that's kind of a goal. Um, to conclude this piece today, uh, how does that journey look? And have you any, can you put any meat on the bone for us about that as, as you go over the next few years or 30 years, I think? Yeah, well, we're about two years in on that five-year plan. We're ahead of plan. Um, when we set that plan... It, it, it might have sounded a bit of a bit pie in the sky at the times because it's all about opportunities that you've put, got onto the plate. But unless you've got some type of vision and you put a stake in the ground, then you're aimlessly going about business. So by putting that stake in the ground, we somehow lit a touch paper and we're tracking to that and we're beating that. So like I said before, we, this year we'll be about 25 million. We've just finished this year. Next year with what we've won, and going forward into the expansion, the 80,000 square foot, next year we'll be over 30 million because of what we offer. So we've only got 20 million to go. In fact, for me, where we're we going next, because we're going to outgrow this site. 
uh, you'll be if you've only got that much to go in a, in a couple of years time you'll be down to a three-day week when you will come and see you in five years thank, thank you. you very much Brent. thank you thanks ever so much thanks